Hotep and greetings of peace everyone. I'm Tahuti Mathra and I'm here on behalf of TheHealthStore.com. And in this particular video, I'm going to address the subject matter of how to transition from the meat-based diet into the vegan diet. Now, chances are you're perhaps a delusional frugivore. A delusional frugivore. Our bodies are designed to consume fruit. That's a biological fact. Now, I said delusional frugivore because we are delusional, especially if we're eating the flesh of animals. See, the human being is designed to eat the flesh of fruit. As a matter of fact, the word meat, especially in a biblical sense, meant food, number one. Number two, the flesh of fruit. But along the way, somebody convinced us to believe that meat exclusively meant the flesh of animals. That's not food for human beings. Flesh from animals is actually the food of carnivores. And there are many delusional frugivores who think they are carnivores, or they want to be a carnivore. They want to be something that by nature they're not. And you know that's where the problems come in at, is when we go against nature. Okay, now, with the preface out of the way, we can get into transitioning. Because I know people say, come on, just hurry up. I'm on this meat here. That I'm getting all this weight. And I heard you talk about parasites and mucus. And I want to be a vegan. And I don't know how to start. And help me out. Help me out. Help me out. Gotcha. I'm going to do my best to help you out. Okay. You're eating animal flesh at present. You're eating animal flesh. For whatever reasons, I, you grew up on it, mom and pops hip you to it, you went to church, you know, they had pig outs, you know, like the Black Vegetarian Society of Georgia have a meat out, and a lot of the churches have a pig out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They just pig out, and they're eating pig, and they just eating everything. So, you may be eating the various animal flesh. You know, sausage, bacon, ham hock, neck bones, pastrami, wieners, you name it. Flesh from dead animals. Dead animal. Dead. You're alive, but you're eating that which is dead. Life renders life, and death renders death. Hmm. You're eating death in an attempt to sustain life. Doesn't add up. But anyway... Okay, we got pork, and that's a euphemism for uh, dead, slaughtered pig. <laughs> Actually, pork, P-O-R-C, stands for swine. Um, and I guess it really doesn't matter that the scripture states that uh, swine flesh is forbidden. The Holy Quran of Islam says the same thing, too. Well, the difference between Muslims and Christians is that Muslims are more disciplined than I mean. Muslims got Christians so beaten area of discipline, it's not funny. Muslims, when they're conscious and they know a thing, they know a thing is pork, they're not going to touch it. Christians, you can read Leviticus, um, what is that, Leviticus 11. You can read Deuteronomy 14. Clearly tell you about the swine. You can read the parable or the, the account where Jesus drove the, the evil spirits into swine, and the swine jumped off a cliff. It ain't gonna matter. They still gonna eat the pig. I mean, these are the, some of the most undisciplined people on the planet. Now, there are exceptions to the rule. Uh, for example, some of you are members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. They will do their best to stick to the diet and stick to... Uh, the uh, the laws, the Old Testament laws pertaining to, to diet. Um, and then there are some regular Christians who they're just health conscious and they know 
the dangers of eating animal flesh. And so they're Christian, but they are vegan. And so they constitute the exception to the rule. So don't think I'm condemning all Christians as far as lack of discipline. But of all religions, uh, you know, Judaism, Islam, uh, and whatever else there is, really just really three major uh, Western religions. But of the three, uh, the Christians, when it comes to discipline, uh, you know, following uh, traditions, uh, rituals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, the Christians are just the worst. Um, they just do whatever they want to do. And then they wonder why of all of the three major uh, religions, Western religions, they have the most problems. And if you look around at the Christian community, you know, I mean, they cancer, diabetes. It's, I mean, they go through stuff that people who don't even believe in Jesus go through. So it's like, what's the incentive of coming to see? I'm making this video a religious based video here in my attempt to make a point. So let me stick to the to the subject matter, you know, because I can already see the comments coming in. You're anti-Christian. You hate Christians. And nah, just making a point, you know, um, just, you know, you just want to help people out. And, you know, Christians just lack discipline. They do everything that they shouldn't do. They smoke, they drink alcohol, they eat swine flesh and other meats and, the, you know, they fornicate, adulterate. They do everything. And just think that forgiveness is just going to wipe everything out. You know, it's, if that's the case, then why do they die from cancer? That's another video. That's another video. My parents were uh, Christian and they ate everything under the sun. And I remember pointing out in the Bible where, you know, the swine flesh, it was stated that the swine flesh was forbidden. And I got cursed out by both of my Christian parents. Hypocrites. Just going to do whatever they want to do. So their residence right now is Inglewood Park Cemetery because they uh, die prematurely. Free will, free will. So you have pork, you have beef, you have lamb, you have turkey, chicken, or you could, you know, sum it up as fowl. F-O-W-L, not F-O-U-L. But then again, W is to you, so... F-O-U-U-L is foul. And you can't escape from foul, F-O-W-L, being foul. Because these birds are coprophagous, which is a term that means dung eater. If that didn't resonate, doo-doo eaters. If that didn't resonate, shit eaters, they eat shit. Coprophagous means to eat shit. And if you look at pigeons and chickens and other of the members of fowl, they eat shit. They do. And you are what you eat. That's why a lot of people, they like shit. They ain't happy unless some shit going on, you know? You're always into some shit. It's always some shit with you. Yeah. Look what the person eats. So you got all these various meats. And you want to be become a vegan. Discipline is key. Discipline. See, discipline is perhaps the number one thing that keeps people from experiencing their ultimate greatness. The lack of discipline. The lack of discipline. You're not going to be successful in achieving goals without discipline. Discipline is key. Willpower is key. If you are presently eating meat, you're going to have to give something up. I suggest you start with the worst meat you could consume, and that is the pig flesh. Make up your mind and first give up the pig flesh. Most people are not strong enough to just go cold turkey and just give up the meat. They're too weak because they haven't developed the willpower. They lack in discipline, they're weak. So meat has more control over them. Their willpower is uncultivated. So you gotta give up the worst, the lesser of all the evils, 
pertaining to swine flesh, uh, pertaining to animal flesh. And swine flesh is the worst. So the first thing you do is give up the swine flesh. That means you're still eating beef, you're eating chicken, turkey, hell, you may be even eating a, a venison or deer meat, uh, lamb. Because people eat a whole bunch of things now. They're eating ostrich. They got ostrich burgers now. I, I, damn, ostrich burger. It's crazy. But I don't want to sound too judgmental. You know, I'm a tourist, so, you know, we're dogmatic, we're opinionated, we all of that. And I'm all of that in a bag of chips. And I admit it. The thing about me is I can admit it, you see. And that's why I tell you guys, you guys would be some fools to follow me. Don't ever consider following me because I'm not perfect. You know what I'm saying? I have, a, I have flaws that I'm working on. I'm hell of a judgmental. <laughs> I'm hell of an opinionate. I'm hell of a dogmatic. You know, I'm conscious of it, though. So, but anyway... I want you to just listen to the information. Don't trip on me. I'm going to keep eating meat because I don't like what Tootie's saying. You would only be hurting yourself. Don't trip on me. Listen to the information. So you give up the swine flesh first. 30 days. Right? You give up the, sw the swine flesh. And after 30 days of giving up the swine flesh, then you make a decision to give up the beef, which is just a nice term for dead slaughtered cow. Or cattle 30 days after you've given up beef then you give up on lamb now for the most part it's the Muslim people out there who do a lot of the lamb they eat a lot of lamb sheep meat there's a you know dead slaughtered sheep meat so you give up the lamb okay so you didn't gave up the pig then you gave up the beef then you give up lamb now if you're doing venison or deer flesh then you give up the deer. Then 30 days after giving up deer, you give up chicken and turkey. After 30 days of doing that, you give up seafood. And you can break seafood down into two parts. The scavengers, you know, you know, the scavenger is that which, you know, eats the remains of the dead. You know, the, the stuff that people like, the shrimp scampi, shrimp. In order to have shrimp scampi, you got to have shrimp and shrimp scavenger. Throw a dead dog in the river, the ocean, wherever shrimp are, the shrimp will eat the dead dog. They'll eat from it. That's what a scavenger does. I mean, a scavenger does serve a purpose. It's like a biological trash can. Everything serves a purpose. Now, just because everything serves a purpose doesn't mean that it's food or should be constituted as food. So you give up your seafood. So you break it down into your scavengers. That's your catfish. That's your shrimp. That's your lobster, your crab. Boom, get that up. 30 days later, give up the fish. That's right, people. Your red snapper, your whiting, your buffalo, your trout, your salmon. Give it up. You see, people, you see how you do it? You go in sequence. Give up the pork. Then give up the beef. Then give up whatever else, say, you know, let's say if you're doing buffalo, you can give up buffalo. You know, you can pretty much choose one animal at a time. Then you give up the lamb. Then you give up the venison or the deer, deer flesh. Then you give up the fowl. Then you give up seafood one. Then you give up seafood two. No more meat. Go in that order because it's going to help you to develop your discipline. Okay. Go in order. One animal at a time. Give it up. Give it up. Now, there's no more meat in your diet because you didn't give up the pork, the beef, the buffalo, the venison, the lamb, the fowl, the seafood. One and two. No more flesh is in your diet. Now, you're dealing with the liquid meat, the animal excreta, known as dairy, liquefied cow, mucus, pus, snot, whatever you want to call it. Dairy products, that which comes from the mammary glands of a cow. Now, ladies, you guys wonder about all these breast problems, all these mammary gland problems. And you guys like dairy, even though it stinks like doo-doo. You like it. I mean, cheese really stinks like doo-doo. 
And I used to like macaroni and cow snot, or macaroni, what is it, macaroni and cheese. It stinks like doo-doo. How did I ever eat that stuff? And you know, when I used to eat the cheese back in the day when I was unconscious, the cheese would stick to my teeth. It, it did. It really did. Oh, God. Ooh. God. Man, you, you, you got to be conscious in this matrix, man. You, you got to, man. If you really want to fulfill your life purpose, you, you, you got to live in accord with nature. You got to be conscious. It helps to be intelligent. It helps to use common sense. It helps to be uh, practical and pragmatic. It helps to be all of those things in this matrix, man. Because you'll be doing some stuff that you'll look back on one day if you become conscious. You'll be like, how in the hell did I do that? How did I eat that? How did I eat that? Consciousness is the key. So now you're just dealing with the dairy products. Animal excreta. And because most people need to develop discipline, here's what you'll need to do. And you can do the same thing with the 30-day step. Or if you want to speed it up, it can be the 20-day step. Even with the meats. I chose 30 days because I know for a lot of people it's going to be really tough. So 30 days... You know, it's not like it's cold turkey, but you can give up the flesh in 20 days. You can do 20 days, give up pork, 20 days, give up beef, 20 days, give up. You don't have to do 30 days, but 30 makes it easy for the average person. You know, the average person don't have much resolve. They don't have much discipline. You know, they don't have the willpower. You know, it's going to take some time to develop these things. You People got a lot of blockage and you know they just got a lot of issues and it, it just takes time see some people are just resilient and strong they can just boop knock it out everybody ain't strong you see so the only reason why i'm suggesting 30 days for each animal is it's general because i know in general most people are not made up of much and i do apologize if it sounds like i'm putting people down i do a reality and uh i am a special form of sociologist. I study society. I study people. And I don't do a good job of holding things in or sugarcoating. I just don't do a good job. And I just, it just comes out and I can't fake the funk. And I just have to call a spade a spade. And I just look at people, you know, when I'm out and I'm at the, the market or walking down the street, wherever I look at people, you know, and, and you know, most people aren't made up of anything. You know, I just look at people smoking just... I was walking down the street in Glenda the other day by Bank of America. And it, I don't know, he's like a black dude, but he could have been Jamaican or something like that, or Islander, what have you. And this dude had, he didn't have a cigarette. He had one of those, I think, one of the, the bogeys, the, the little the brown colored cigarette. And the sucker was blowing the smoke out of his mouth like a goddamn dragon. You know, and I saw, so I had to, well, I, I was at the um, the intersection, right, waiting for the, the, the light you know, to, to turn uh, to, the, to, the, to the color that authorizes you to cross the street, you know, <laughs> which is really the little white man. You know, you can't really cross the street until the white man says you can. So, you know, the stop sign is red, you know, and it's yellow as a warning. Then you see the little white man, and that means you can walk on the other side. So you can't really get to the other side until the white man says you can. Now, I'm just having fun there, people. You're a racist, Tehuti Madra. Just having some fun. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm with this this cat here, right? And he and he's low, no number type. When I see people about to smoke a cigarette, I'll be like, yo, 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 please, dude, can you just wait? Can Let me cross the street before you light up. Please, man, I, I, I just, I'm not into the tie. It gives me a headache. Can you please light your poison after I cross the street? And most people are just, oh, okay. I'll be messing people up. And I'll be verbalizing. You know, I don't care. You could be muscular, big, a cop, whoever. Yo, can you please do me a solid? That stuff is toxic. It gives me a headache. I be messing with people on purpose. I be like, man, the chemicals in that thing, that's 700 chemicals, man. And when you put fire, it's 1,400. It kicks my body. Maybe you can tolerate it, you know, but I want to live. I want good health. I want to breathe. Can you not do that? And I be messing people up on purpose. I don't have the patience anymore. <laughs> So, um, but this dude here, I was looking straight, and so he just lit up, and I said, oh, goddamn, puff the goddamn magic dragon. I was, and I'm like, 
And I be messing with people like, oh, gee, God, oh, my God. And I'll step out in the, in the street and everything. And I'm like, come on, I'm waiting for the light to change. And then I'll run. And I'll look back at the person because I want the person to know I'm getting away from your, your behind. <laughs> yeah, I'll be calling them some words and some names. That's why I like being to myself, man, because I'm, you know, I, it's, oh, to who do you have to be patient and you have to have love and you have, I ain't got time to be hearing that shit. Do you understand? I, I'm like that when I'm around people who emanate love, but a sap sucker that think he's puffed the goddamn magic dragon, he's blowing goddamn smoke in the atmosphere and he's doing something he ain't got to be doing. I, it, the patience and the love, all that stuff is like back burner. You know what I'm saying? Because this cat is harming me. He's harming the birds. This sucker's doing harm. Now, I know we're all doing harm in, in some respect, but I'm like this. Okay, maybe we're doing harm in, in uh, driving a car, right? But from smoking a cigarette and driving a car, I mean, which, which one can we really do without in our society? People don't have to smoke, but you do have to get in a car, drive a car, to drive long distances you got to be if you in glendale and you got to be downtown la you you're not going to be walking downtown la you can't even ride a bike to downtown la and be in 30 minutes or even an hour so you know compared to cigarettes we need cars or we need to drive more than we need cigarettes and you can break this thing down you know what i'm saying which one to the cigarettes or microwave we don't need either but again people are weak i need my microwave i ain't got time to cook it People are just weak, you know, so you have to understand that and say, okay, listen, we can't take away all the bad stuff. And that's really a trip that we can't even do that. Okay, we're going to get rid of all the alcohol. All right, what alcohol? No, I didn't. Mm -mm, I need my alcohol. I, I'm stressed out. I, oh, no, 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 no. Let's keep it for, for 30 days and then we, we'll think about getting rid of it. They're going to get rid of it. They're going to think about getting rid of it. Can't do that. We're going to get rid of all the cigarettes. Right, nah, that's... Now, why do you got to do that, man? The cigarette calls my nerves, man. I need my cigarettes. We just can't get rid of everything. Babe. You can't just say, look, we're going to get rid of cigarettes. We're going to get rid of alcohol. We're going to get rid of microwave ovens. It, 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 you know, it, it, it's just not going to happen in the Matrix. I mean, I, 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 you know, I don't even know if I would want to see that. I, I just, you know, if you just take away all the cigarettes, take away all the alcohol, you know, take away all the chocolate, take away all the coffee, you know, shut down all the Starbucks and Seattle's best. Get rid of all the microphone, uh, uh, um, microwave ovens. Get rid of all the cell phones. Get, you know, you just go down the list of all the stuff that's just causing harm to us and the planet. Could we even make it? That's something to think about. Are we dependent on insalubrious things to make it? Are we that dependent? That's something to think about. Damn. Humanity has evolved to this present state of dependency. Humanity has evolved. Is it really evolved or evolution? Is it? That's something to think about too. Humanity has evolved to the present state of working to pay bills. That's all we do is pay bills. A bill is always due. Charter cable bill. The rent is coming up for everybody. Car notes. That's a bill. Cell phone bill. Internet bill. Child support bill. Insurance bill. Automobile insurance bill. Credit card bill. Department store. That's a credit card too. Bill. Damn. <laughs> bills. 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 I was watching the movie Thank You for Smoking, which is one of my favorite films. A lot of truth revealed in that movie. Thank you for smoking. And my man, who was the uh, proponent for the cigarette industry, said that most people do everything they do to pay the mortgage. And he said, you know, we'd be better off if we started renting. 
And that was a very profound statement. And that's very true. I mean, think about, and I know we're talking about how to trans, y'all know me, man. I can't stick to no damn one subject, man. I, I, I'm Mars and Gemini. I'm all around. Air, I'm around. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not me, you know. But we're going to get, we're going to finish it. We're going to finish it. We're going to finish it. But just think about it, though. It's because I want you to think, man. I want you to think. I, I got to drive this home, man, because... Man, I, you know, look, man, I'm unable to answer all the inquiries, man. You know, I, I mean, I thought I had it bad years ago. It, it's, it's just hundreds of pages, man. We, it, it's, you know, hire some people. No, you got to know what I know. And I just, I, I have given up on people that will challenge themselves to just learn a lot and hold. I've just, it's not that I've given up on him. I know there's some people out there, you know, but, you, you know, it's an exception to the rule and, you know, as far as knowing a whole bunch of subjects, it's just, I don't, I don't know. I just, mm. it's been a minute, you know. I told you, you know, numerology, you know, astrology, you know, this, you know, that, you know, bam, 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 bam. yes, because I believe in the power of the mind. Everybody has a brain, man. Everybody can do it if you want to do it. Oh my God, I don't meet people. Your mind is just fabulous. It's great. It's, I don't want to hear about my mind. I want to hear about your mind, man. Because I want you on this side, man. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. And do you know people, man, like in their like late 20s, 30s, 40s, do you know the general sentiment of most people is, it's too late for me to use my mind. It's too, it's too late for me to study and know all that you know, dude. And I don't know jack crap. Keeping it real. I just don't. I know what I know, but I don't know everything. And I study every day because I recognize the fact, yo, it's a lot of stuff I don't know. Really, it's a lot of stuff I do not know. So I got, I, this is a library here, man. I made so many people just know, it's just, you know, I don't, I don't do good reading. I like to watch and I like to, get, and it's like, man, I don't take notes, you know, I, yeah, it's, it's, the world has changed. The world has changed. That big, I think the smartphone, you're using your fingers and stuff. I mean, nobody cracks open. There's a book on ghosts. I'm going to be talking about ghosts, too, in the future. But no, th th this day, you don't really see people on the bus or the subway with this. No. They got the gadgets. They got the little plugs on the ear, and they... You know, and they lyrics is going into them. Nobody has a dictionary. No words, man. Words. Knock to strike to strike with a hard or sharp blow. Knob a rounded protuberance. Knockout a victory in boxing in which one's opponent is unable to rise from the canvas within a specified time. Words. Words, the American Heritage Dictionary, over 70,000 entries. And according to Verbal Advantage, only 1,200 words separate the high vocabulary achiever from the low vocabulary underachiever. Only 1,200 words. And this book got 70,000, and there's only 1,200 that separates the achiever from the underachiever. I was watching that movie V for Vendetta. It's a great film. I highly recommend it. That dude led the revolution, but at the same time, he lived in a library. He lived in a library. There is no revolution without knowledge, right knowledge. You know, in order for America to have had its revolution, the French were involved, a French secret society. And there was a society known as the Encyclopédie Dictionnaire. And they created the encyclopedia and the dictionary. They had to enlighten Americans. That's why France gave the United States the Statue of Liberty, whose proper name is 
liberty enlightening the world. Enlightenment. <sighs> the age of enlightenment is pretty much over with. People are very simple, don't like to read. You know, the average commercial is 30 seconds. I spoke to somebody in the Bay Area and she told me that it's, they, they're doing something now whereby it's 15 seconds. I, 15 seconds? I mean, I thought 30 seconds was bad. I mean, you know, 60 seconds, but just like, no, 30 seconds. The average American has an attention span of 30 seconds. You must get their attention in 30 seconds or else you lost them. You don't have them. And what you do is your message must be 30 seconds and then you must play it over and over again because repetition of a message constitutes mental programming. So you're not going to really get much information in 30 seconds. So if you like drink Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola will quench your thirst. And you play it over and over and over again. People got it. They go to the store. Hey, yo, man, what you want to drink, man? Hey, uh, give me a Coke. Give me a Coca-Cola, man. Uh, but there's 27 beverages. Give me a Coca-Cola. Because repetition of a message constitutes mental programming. But has humanity evolved to the present state of just paying bills? Look at where we're at today. We're dependent upon gadgets. And they're cool gadgets, and, and, they, and they serve a purpose. I'm not condemning them. It's, it's, it's ingenuity, it's creativity. But it's all from the left brain. It's not from the right brain. Because every iPhone could come in a case that's made out of diode material. Could be. Counteracting the radiation. It's, a, it's an awesome invention. But the radiation, all that other stuff, they, they just didn't, they didn't take into account that and say, you know what, we're gonna put the case in diode material to neutralize the radiation. And, I mean, that's a hell of an invention. See, we make great inventions in the Western world. It's just we do things from the left brain, not the right brain. So we make great inventions that are detrimental. Every computer should have diode and seaweed and black crystals in it. There's plenty to go around. There's plenty of this stuff on the earth. Put in the technology, but no. Could it serve a purpose? But the radiation is going to, you know, cause their cells to deteriorate, leads to cancer and other diseases. That's great for our friends who are in the, the medical field. You know, the, the big pharma, drugs. Hmm. You get sick. You got to go to the doctor. That's business for them. They're going to prescribe drugs. That's great for the, the drug companies. That's great for the pharmacists. Staying at the computer for a long time, that's going to mess the eyes up. Well, that's great for the optometrist industry. They get to sell glasses now. Hmm. Everything is dependent upon something else. Every industry seems to be dependent upon another industry. It all works together. Big business, corporate America. Interesting. But is, I mean, is this where humanity has ended up? I mean, most people are exerting so much energy into working a job. And what do most people work a job for? Survival purposes. What you saying, man? Don't pay the rent. I'm not saying that. Pay your rent. But I would like to ask the question. Is your rent more than 30% of what you bring home? Because I know there are people out there where rent is half of what they bring home. And for some people, it's 70%. You know, there's a lot of people, they want to keep up with the Jones. See, they haven't realized how even the Jones filed for bankruptcy, right? But they're trying to keep up with the Jones. And you know, when they get through paying for everything, they have no money left over. What just got to do with transitioning into uh, a vegan? Well, you own the D Health Store YouTube channel and you listen to the Tutti Matra, and this is just how I do. I deviate.
There are many people living paycheck to paycheck. One paycheck away from poverty, homelessness. One or two paychecks away from it. But that too creates an industry. The payday centers, they make a fortune. Many of them are owned by your banks, Wells Fargo, Bank of America. They know a lot of people who ain't got checking accounts, but they know people get checks and need to cash them. It's really ingenious. They're mostly in poor communities, but they're, they're broadening out. I see a lot of them in white communities now, you know. Things have changed, you know. White people are not as privileged as they used to be by mere virtue of being white. You know, this are some things that I always knew. Well, since I became conscious, <laughs> you know, the people who run this world, I mean, they may have white skin, but their white is a form of mentality. It ain't the skin color. You know, you had a lot of the masses of white people. They thought that the past was the blue eyes, the blonde hair, and the white skin. I'm white. I'm white. I have nothing to worry about. That's what they thought. Because <laughs> the real white people was like, listen, y'all got rectums too. And if you ain't got hundreds of millions or billions of dollars in the bank, you can't have the white attitude. So, sorry. So a lot of white folks dealing, man, with losing homes and, you know, they're the recipients of uh, downsizing, corporate downsizing. And there's a whole bunch of stuff, man. You know, you see white cats going crazy, going postal and shooting up post office and shooting up the jobs. And that's because they're feeling it. You know, they was, whoa, I thought I was privileged. I'm, 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 I'm being... Treated like an African American. I'm treated like an Hispanic. I'm treated like an Asian. What's up? They just found out what time it was. Found out. <laughs> it ain't about race the way they thought it was about race. I mean, race plays a role, but it ain't the way most people think. You see? It ain't. See, if you're not in that clique, Race don't really matter. Race is a button that they use against the masses of the people. You know, and when you understand that there are more white people in America than black people, white people actually get screwed more than black people. And that's true. That's true. The IRS screws more white people than they do black people. That's a fact. I disagree with that, man. No, Mr. Black, we have it harder. Yeah, we have it harder because on average, we're not as smart as white people. Okay, now white people are not like brilliant there. I'm just saying on average, because let me tell you, I, I'm a sociologist. I'm a certain or a special type of sociologist. I study people and don't get it twisted. It's some stupid, dumb ass white people in the world. Okay, don't think it's just black people who are just dumb and Hispanics and it is people. Do you hear me? It is people across the board. Those people at the top, they don't care not about no blonde hair, blue eyes, white skin. They don't care about kinky head and broad nose. They don't care. They're all cockroaches. White cockroaches, African, African-American cockroaches, Mexican, Latino, Hispanic cockroaches, Asian cockroaches. They see us all the same. All the same. But on average, white people are going to be doing better than black people because they know more. Take away the privilege, because white people used to get privilege, <laughs> used to. Still there in a little respect, but they're pulling that, you know. Out here, I believe it was somewhere in Orange County, was it Fountain Valley Police? Beat the hell out of a white boy. Just, it's like, whoa, man, it was worse than Rodney King because they killed him. And he was white. And what's the dude in Torrance, California? He was a white boy. They beat the hell out of him. I've just been seeing the big picture for a while that, you know what, the, the race stuff is a card that those in positions of power play to keep people divided. And uh, white people are screwed, black people are screwed, Hispanic. The people, the masses 
are screwed regardless of nationality, the race, what have you. Man, you said that you white people are smarter than black on average. On average, let's just keep it real. Because they make more money than us. They live in better community communities than us across the board. This, I'm generalizing now. I'm generalizing. And the problem with African Americans, we don't study. And why people are going down too, because they're not studying to the, to the degree they used to. And for the life of me, I don't understand why a lot of them are following black people in our decadence. You know, it's true. You got white cats, man. My nigga, yo, what's up, my nigga? I'm like, whoa, you got two white boys and they call each other niggas. I'm in Glendale. This is Armeniaville. Armenians, it's pretty much their town. And they be in the call, boom, 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 the bass. I be like, man. And they listen to rap music, decadent rap music, more so than black people. They call it women bitches, and they think it's cool, man. I said, why are these racists following black people and they decadence? I mean, if you're going to follow black people, follow the Martin Luther King, the Malcolm X's, you know, the Jesse Jackson Farrakhan or something. I mean, Lil Wayne and, I mean, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. Is that? purpose of evolution to pay bills <laughs> to finance degradation and degeneracy a lot of people do it you know people make money they work and get money and they take that money and they go and invest it in something that is insalubrious that will harm them I mean a lot of people get messed up because they didn't know how to spend their money People get paid, they take that money, they go buy some booze. They don't have the discipline in the first place and they drink too much. And they catch a case, DUI, they're in trouble now. How did that happen? They didn't know how to invest their money wisely. They invested in alcohol, an intoxicant, intoxicant. Look at the name intoxicant. Toxic is in the word, it's an intoxicant. Why would you willfully, consciously, knowingly go purchase an intoxicant? Now you got a DUI. Now you in court. People, they be on me. Man, Judy, man, you too strict, man. You, you just, you too, 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 you too, this and that. I can afford to be the way that I am because I'm the one picking up the goddamn phone asking, how can I serve you? Because you need some help. It ain't the other way around. Because I live a very disciplined, principled life. And it pisses a lot of people off. And you know, because I speak it. I speak from here. Because I know me. Yeah, he's arrogant. He, this motherfucking head so goddamn big, he this and that. You projecting, sap sucker. I'm in control of my life. So I'm going to be on your ass if I'm in a car with you. I'm like that with people. You come pick me up in Glendale. We're rolling down the street. I'm going to tell you because I care about you. Yo, the speed limit is 25 miles per hour. Glendale PD don't play. And I support them because those crazy Armenian youth, the males, they crazy. I mean, we talk in nice residential neighborhoods. I mean, it's residential, man. It's like, you'll see Regina King, because she, she resides in Glendale. You know, we all stay in the, in the same general area, you know? So you, you Regina King walks down the street, you know, Malcolm, uh, Jamal Warner, he's there walking the dog. And, you know, and then you got other people just doing their thing. They're jogging, little children out and playing. 
and these damn are meaning you. That's like, and I, you know, and I, I want to shape shift into a, a cop and just catch him and write him thirty tickets. You can't be doing no stuff like that because you because you stupid. You can you can you can hurt a child, man. You don't speed down a residential street, man. You don't do that. And so I ain't mad at Glendale PD. One time I got pulled over by Glendale PD and uh, he, what the dude say? Uh, and he was cool. 30 seconds, man. He was, uh, what happened? He had pulled me over. It was something about like a little stop, but he really wasn't tripping. It was just his way of just stopping me. You know, the, the, the windows were kind of somewhat tinted, what have you. And who he found, when he found out, you know, who I was, what I was about and everything, he no worry about it. I don't need to see your license or anything. And he just basically told me, listen, we're getting complaints about the drug. I said, I already know, officer. I'm straight. That's where I'm at now. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me. I know cops be beating people into some corrupt cops and they should be fucking hung. And I, I know that. But they're good cops as well, too. And so in, in Glenda, it's, it's, it's a weird thing there. You know, it's just a weird dynamic how you connect with the other residents and then the, the police. And when they find out what you're about, you know, you know, listen, man, we own a store down here. And, you know, I stay back here on, you know, in, in the city of Glendale. So it's like, OK, you're supposed to be here. You're cool. You're businessman, what have you. Um, we're just enforcing the Witcher calling because a lot of complaints. And we and he didn't want to come out and say, but I, I know it's the Armenian youth. It's the Armenian youth. And you know what? I witness it. I witness it. So I'm like, dude, I'm straight. You can stop me a hundred times, man. If you, if you looking out for these cats here, do it. You know, and it, it's really, it's unfortunate that you have to go there, but you got to do what you got to do to let some stuff be known. Because if not, people just, they'll just take things for granted. They won't care. I mean, these guys speed down the street, loud music, especially by Brand uh, Park there, man. Oh, my God. You got all these children. I mean, these are white children, some black children, Armenian children. And it's just children. And these idiots, man, would just speed down the street, you know. And it's like, then Glenn PD is doing their thing. But it's like, you know, maybe you guys need to be stationed in front of the park there. You know, I mean, it's because that's what these guys are doing today, right there by Brand Park. You know, and it's like, you know, it, this is residential, man. I mean, big houses, families and stuff, man, is... You know, so far, nothing, but it's, it's you know, I'll be thinking about it, and I see them fools just, it's like, what the fuck are you thinking, man? I mean, we know they're not thinking, but it's like, God, there's no common sense or anything, man. The things we do in youth, we do some very stupid stuff. You know, I grew up in South Central Los Angeles, and we had our equivalent of that, so I'm not just picking on the Armenians. You know, you just, you just do stupid things, you know. And then people wonder why the Jews got people beat. I mean, the Jews, I was watching the movie A Stranger Among Us on the plane going to Atlanta. I said, you know, you got to break them damn Jews off, man. They, they're disciplined, man. They do their thing, man. It's, you, you know, it makes sense why certain people run the world. It, it just does, man. It's not, man, the Jews, the Jews. Man, the Jews, man, they, they, they have a course of action and they stick to it, man. They look out for each other. And the, the Armenians do that as well, too, you know. And when you look at all the races, the blacks, there you go. See, who are you talking about? I, I have to, man. I mean, because blacks gravitates towards me, and I, and I got a message for black people. You know what I'm saying? I, I got a message for all people, but I got to talk to black people, too. We just at the bottom run, no matter what. Man, I was in Atlanta, man. I went to certain parts of Atlanta. I, black people are just going to be black people just wherever we go. We're at the bottom. And that's why other races do better than us on average because, see, they know more and they have more cohesion, more cultural cohesion. You go to Koreatown, man, they got banks and, and, and loan centers and everything and it's in the Korean language. That's how you know it's there because it's their language. If you can't speak Korean, you just shit out of luck. It's Korean. You Korean, you know what it says. You know where to go. You be rolling through black people, I'm like, damn, you just see the little strange letter. That's their stuff. See, and we got the hood. You know, and they ain't nothing in the hood reflective of Africa, but an African clothing store or African bookstore. And that's just one out of uh, several hundred businesses in the community. You know, you got 
Popeye's fried chicken. Now, where's Africa at in Popeye's fried chicken? What's the connection? It, it just doesn't exist. You know, I mean, in LA, we got little Ethiopia, so you get some little culture there. But even Ethiopians are like, yo, don't get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? We not African American. This is we Ethiopians. You know, we're Jamaican. We Jamaican, okay? We Jamaican boy. Don't get it twisted. It's this distinguishment. But we will not read. I mean, poverty is the result of ignorance. Is a result of ignorance. You have a lot of blacks who are, who are impoverished. You have a lot of blacks who make money and who are still impoverished. We will not study. Listen, when I grew up, we were so broke at times. We wasn't poor. We just we just had a lot of times of being broke. Lights used to get turned off. The water would get turned off. I, I just remember the refrigerator being empty. All you would open up and just see a little box of arm and hammer baking soda to, to, to keep the, the baking powder would have to keep the refrigerator fresh. You open that bad boy up and just, it's all that space in there. Little box of Arm & Hammer in the corner over there. The cover is empty. All you see is some damn coffee and a big bag of generic sugar. And a couple of cockroaches. I remember all that stuff growing up in South Central Los Angeles. So we had our times. I remember a bag of potatoes would carry us over the weekend. All you need was some ketchup, salt, and a bag of potatoes. And that's what you ate. Fried inside of the potatoes. Because you, you're in survival mode. You know, you may have a little bag of cheap rubber's bread. You know, you got, okay, ain't nothing in the refrigerator. Oh, shit, there's a jar of mayonnaise. You know, a mayonnaise sandwich sound good right about now. You know? A butter sandwich. Okay, all we got is some bread. Ain't nothing in the refrigerator, but oh, there's some. Oh, there's a bottle of Brer Rabbit syrup. I'll make a syrup sandwich. That's what you do, you know, growing up in, in the hood and in, in, in the impoverished days. And, and you know, I'm questioning a lot of you. See, y'all probably laughing at me, but see, some of y'all can relate to what I'm talking about. Y'all done had your damn lights turned off and the water turned off and the damn uh, subscription television or cable TV bill turned off. That's what happens when you are impoverished mentally as well as financially <laughs> that type of stuff happens because you're on struggle mode and it's all about it's all about struggling and my parents didn't stop smoking cigarettes and put that money aside they didn't stop drinking booze every thursday night and put that money aside you know pops the perm and the, all the chemicals they didn't stop doing it put the money aside no no and we paid the price of that I'm, I'm just sharing. I'm just talking to stimulate some thought because it's 2012. And guess what? You still got people experiencing what I experienced back in the 1970s and the 19, early 1980s. I said, I ain't going through that. I'm not. I'm not, man. You know, in America, it's still the land of opportunity, man. It's, it's still the land of opportunity to take control of your damn life. And you ain't going to change a lot of this injustice and this politics, which is bullshit. And, and you still got the racism. And you ain't messing with that stuff. Okay? And it does serve a purpose on a high level. You ain't messing with that. But you need to learn to mess with yourself. I made it my mind a long time ago. And I didn't know how I was going to get to where I am right now. But I said, I'm not going through that. I'm not. And I mean, we struggled in the hood and, you know, the rent, the house rent was only like 800 a month. And we had on TV, which was 1995 a month. And the job bill was really low compared to what I'm paying now. It was really low. But, you know, Pops only made a certain amount of money predicated upon what he had up here. You know, Pops dropped down to 10th grade. He had to work to cotton fields in Mississippi. And my mother worked as well, too. But they were black people. You know, they, they, they were... Let me let me correct that because you know now black people mean something different. It's a notch, a couple of notches better than niggas. Okay, because a certain type of black people, there's a variation, and you you know people even niggas niggas are good, got good hearts and things, you know, but they 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 they're really dumb. They 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 they're not smart people. No common sense, none of that stuff. They're in a bad shape, and then they do things to keep themselves in a the bad state and shape 
Okay, so you can't get a job. So, okay, well, fuck it, then. I'm going to bust somebody upside the head. I'm going to push an old lady down, take her goddamn social security check. What? Man, we ain't got no food, man. We do it. I'm going to break up somebody's house and steal. Like, why is crime the only goddamn option? Well, Mr. Matra, you know, crime is uh, very excessive in the black communities because of the correlation with the uh, high unemployment. Well, what's... make a job. That's what I'm doing, nigga. I sell dope, nigga. That's my job. I get the job, nigga. I sell dope. That's my job, man. I'm an illegal pharmacist. Dude, why do we lean towards insalubrious stuff? I don't know what you're talking about. I credit my job. Shit. I'm a motherfucking strawberry. Shit, nigga. I give here. I sell pussy. Nigga, I'm, I'm employed. I credit my job. But it's, you diseased. You passing STDs around. You no good for the community. We talking about employment on the salubrious side. Well, crime is hard because the correlation with high unemployment. Well, damn. I mean, all the stores owned by Koreans. I mean, you, shit. I mean, if the Koreans could open up a store, the blacks can open up a store too. I mean, it only makes sense. I mean, the blacks are the ones patronizing. The blacks are the ones in the hood. The Koreans own the store in the hood, but they don't live in the hood. Malcolm X told you that the store should be owned by the people who live in the hood to service the, the needs of the people in the hood. It only makes sense. It's not racist. I mean, you go to Koreatown, the Koreans own the stores. You don't see blacks owning stores in Koreatown. It's, and you, it's across the board. The blacks do not control the economy of the community, of the hood. And then you just bitch and complain. And the Koreans own all the stores. They're going to continue to because you patronize them. Man, the Koreans on all the store, man. Hey, I'll be back, man. I got to go to the store, man. Give me a pack of cigarettes, man. There you go. There you go. It's just thinking. You think too much. You goddamn right. I'll never stop thinking. You can hate. I don't give a damn. One thing I can say about myself and my little brother through those those hard times run dmc style <laughs> hard times spread me just like the flu yeah homeboy look out don't let it catch you and it caught us a lot of times i gotta go play my cut dmc hard times the damn cool rap song that's when rap was cool man early 80s 83 man one thing I say about my little brother and I, during a hard time, we may have, you know, subsisted, subsisted on a bag of potatoes to make it through the Monday when Pops got some money, what have you. One thing about my little brother and I, we would play basketball. That kept us out of trouble. We played basketball. We watched the Lakers. And back then, it was about, you know, Boston, Larry Bird, Dr. J, Philadelphia, the Lakers with Magic Kareem. It's, oh, man, those were the good old days as far as that mundane stuff. My little brother and I, we was always in the books. We was, my mother had an old New World Encyclopedia set she bought. And we had it. And my pops had a big box of old NBA magazines each year. And my little brother and I, we utilized what we had to cultivate ourselves. Even as little boys, everybody else was gangbanging, selling dope. But we, those, it was something about those encyclopedias. We could study the tallest buildings, and the Chicago Sears building was 1,400-something feet. And then you had the, um, then it became the, the, the World Trade Center of New York, and then it was the Empire State Building, and then the first interstate building in downtown Los Angeles. We would, we would study all of that. We would study the longest bridges, the Brooklyn Bridge and the Golden Gate Bridge. We studied that. We studied the states that produced the most potatoes and the states that produced the most apricots. We just went through the A, the B, the C, and we learned things. We saw things that made us desire a better life through the books. You know, there's little pictures of little white boys eating a sandwich. You broke, hungry, starving, little white boy on the train eating sandwich. Like, ah, oh, damn, they're privileged. They're lucky. Wow, I would love to be eating what he's eating right now. Or you watch different strokes 
and and you know Arnold be heartbroken over some girl. They go to a restaurant. Uh, this is from the, the TV show Different Strokes, and they have you know they go to the certain little uh, little ice cream parlor, little hamburger stand, order a big nice ice cream sundae and a bourbon fries, and then they couldn't. Mm, I can't eat, and they would just leave the food. And you know when you starving, you be like, man, what the fuck was wrong with that? Guy? Like, man, how you gonna leave that? See, his situation in life was different because Mr. Drummond was rich. They had the rich uh, uh, stepfather, uh, uh, um, Drummond, Mr. Drummond. They had money. We was in Watts, South Central. We was broke. So we watching what's happening. We watching Rerun and Roger, and they got burgers and fries and sodas, and they just can't eat. They just leave it. You can't be watching TV, and your situation is different. You ain't got nothing to eat because you're going to be condemning uh, TV characters. Man, Roger, them stupid, man. They leaving that burger. They leaving that fry. They leaving a the soda. Look, look, look at Arnold, man. He leaving a big ice cream sundae. This situation in life was different. <laughs> but even still, we was always putting the knowledge in our head. Even my little baby brother, Mike, man, he's on a knowledge tip. He travels to Fiji, Africa. He's, he's in the comedic, the African, you know, the study. He's kind of limited there. But that's better than not having anything to, to be about. And so my little brother, he studies, man, you know, uh, went to Africa. He's, he's done some things, man, you know. He was in the Nation of Islam for just a little taste, and, you know, he got his negative experience, too, and it pushed him out. And, yeah, but we kept studying because nothing made us, you know what I'm saying, nothing broke us. And to this day, you know, my brother, you know, good job, 30-something an hour, you know, he takes care of, of his son, and, and you know, he, he lives positive, man, you know. Got a little girlfriend. He, he, you know, he's taking care of his business. And it's the knowledge that carried us. But for myself, my God, I had to purchase the books. This is nothing behind me, man. This is, this is nothing. This like, this is, I got so much knowledge. It's, it's really carried me over. I had fights with women over books. Don't ever go against this knowledge. Because you wouldn't even be with me if it wasn't for this damn knowledge. I probably would, I would probably be in jail or dead if it wasn't for this knowledge. This knowledge, man, saved my life. I'm going to have to tell Gump to title this video Random Talk. I'm going to have to do the transition into meat and vegan in a separate video. I'm going to have to. It's amazing how people are so adverse to knowledge, put knowledge in your head. See, I recognize what's going on in the world. I know that we're they're dumbing us down like at an all-time high. But when you watch that movie V for Vendetta, even though books are now kind of somewhat outdated, it's the key. It's really the true key to help you get to personal salvation, personal liberation. It's, it's still the key. It's still the key. Because see, when you read a book, you ain't got to worry about no radiation. And if you're reading stuff online, the internet, you got to worry about some radiation. You can get some knowledge, but you're going to get knowledge at an expense. You're going to destroy your eyes. You're going to destroy your eyes, you see. That's why the eye category on D Health Store is going to grow. Because of the eye problems, man. I was in Atlanta and, I mean, everywhere I go, you just look at people who wear glasses, man. I'm like, you know, dude, man, have you ever heard of calendula? I man, start overdosing on calendula. They got lutein. It's a natural source of, uh, 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 of lutein, which is an eye nutrient, man. Beautiful orange colored uh, her. I was working with it yesterday. Lutein consumed the, 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 the calendula. Lutein is in calendula. Calendula is a flower. You know, you got carrot powder, you got calendula, you got eye bright, you got bilberry. Consume this. Get the, 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 the eye formula, man. You, you, you feed the eyes, man. Get the, the pinhole readers. And, and wear, wear them 15, 30 minutes per day. Do the eye exercises, you know. Move your eyeballs. Move them. Get your blue stones, man, in just 30 seconds. You know, do you do your other eye exercises? 
Do whatever, man, to protect your eyes, man. Damn, you you wasn't born with no damn glasses. And people just do it and they just wear it and they just wear it and they just get used to it and they just get used. And the ciliary muscles and the, and, and the eyes just get weaker and weaker and weaker. And then you got to get a stronger prescription glass. They're making money, man. Because you won't use what God gave you, man. Okay, so your eyes is tripping and you see blurry and stuff, but don't give up. Look, you know, I remember when we used to go to the DMV in that school back in the day, they used to have us cover our eye and you have to read A, W, R, L, N, O, Q. Still do it. You know, I'll sit back here and like, okay. Oxford Shorter Dictionary. Webster's Unabridged Dictionary. I'm looking at the books over there in my library, in my um, dictionary collection. You, you know, do things, but why do you have to wait till you go to the DMV or the doctor, man? I don't get that. You can do it on your own. Just because you're out of school doesn't mean you have to stop studying. Man, I got all type of tapes, man, how to develop a work ethic and how to study. And, and I put myself in a groove where I'm in, in school. And I'm not the school type, but, you know, I, I can fantasize. I can imagine. You know, I'm in school in here. I'm not in, in, in not the school that you used to. That's some bullshit. I, I, mm -mm. I'd curse a professor out or a teacher. We'd have some major differences. No, my school is in here. And I'm going to take some notes. And I'm, 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 I'm going to write my notes. I got, I got my, my vocabulary words. I keep them because my goal is to you go over 20 words a day. And I started this back in the 90s. See, it's already open. These, these are the words that I'm working on. Endogamy, estrangement, exogamy, extramarital, homogamy, housewife, hypogamy. You got affiance, annulment, better have, bluebeard. These are just words that, you know, that, that I gravitated towards. And I wrote this all with my hands. No typing. Page after page after page. I love words, man. The secret is in words, people. You know, we're controlled with words. Remember my, my, my uh, article, Word Control? You got to crack open the words. Words. I started this. You can see it's kind of old and beat up, but I've had it for a while. And these are my vocabulary words. There's no excuse. Like, I'm going to end this video in a little while because, you know, I got to go to the bank. I got to take care of some stuff. I got to go finish making some herbs. I got to make some uh, elixirs, some extracts. Um, it's a bunch of stuff I got to do. Um, I have to do some customer service, some return some, some phone calls. I got to type at least one article. I've been, I'm making my video. I mean, I got a bunch of stuff to do, you know, throughout the whole day. Then I got to Later on in the day, I got to go pick up my children from my first marriage in, in L.A., you know, two weeks on, two weeks off. And I was in Atlanta last weekend, so now I'm back. So I this is my turn to pick them up today, and I'll drop them off Sunday. And, you know, and, 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 you know and I work around the clock, you know. I, I do me. You know, I got to study. You know what I'm saying? I got to watch something educational. I got to organize this place here. You know, uh, I got to work with my man Jay on some new categories for, for, for the old website and the new website. Basically, what I'm saying is this, people. I make no excuses. I'm sorry. And I'm busy. I'm busy than most people. No excuses. I got to put some knowledge in my head. By any means necessary. I got to. I see what's going on in society, man. And I know those with knowledge, those who can express themselves, those who can speak, man, these people are going to be in the top two. They're going to be in the category of the movers and shakers. I don't want to be part of the masses. I choose to be a mover and shaker. My goal, my desire is to impact via the alternative health field. But not just that. You know, my whole thing is, is speaking, whatever it is, law, health, herbs, it must be communicated a certain way. So I'm always working on my delivery. Always. You know, because you hear it like you think about eloquence, articulation, enunciation, pronunciation. I, I hear all this stuff here. So 
even though this is a computer screen, man, I'm working on myself. I'm practicing. You know, they say the number one fear of most people, at least most, most Americans, is the fear of public speaking. But I ain't got no fear, no damn public speaking. I spoke so much in little apartments pacing back and forth. The audience was in my head. So when I got the call, no big deal. I can talk. I don't get nervous. My first lecture that I gave, I was at home. I was at home. Oldest would get people off the street, bring them to his apartment and invite me. Oh, I'll be talking to 8, 19, 11, 12, some people. That was my audience. You don't wait for school. You don't wait for this. You, you get up and you do now. You stop giving so much power to these institutions of the matrix. Makes no sense. Okay, so what? You didn't have the money to go to college, man. You can afford a library card. You're free. They may cost a dollar too because the cities, the, the counties need money. What's a dollar, man? Come on now. You spend a, a, a dime, you buying a dime bag of weed. Get a library card. Go study. Get some knowledge. Go. Get it. You need it. And that's why I was saying that black people, African Americans, at the bottom, we will not study. We like to dance. We love to shake our booties. You know, we love to press our hair. And, and you know, we be having gold all in our teeth and tattoos. And, you know, we like fancy clothes and big cars. And, you know, we're very material people. And it would be okay if we had some up here. I mean, because when you got a people, man, you're bringing in $700 billion per year, which is more than the national, uh, uh, what do they call that? The um, gross product of, um, of certain countries? That is crazy. $700 billion. That's more than some countries bring in, dealing with their gross uh, uh, national budget. 700 billion. That's more than some countries' growth in the economy. And we're talking less than 15% of the population. 700 billion per year. And don't own diddly squat. I'm really into education to be an educator. I was talking to my barber last week. He said, I saw you on the Black Business Network. And I said, yeah. I said, you know, D Health Store is there. And, you know, I'm the image of the business. And I was just telling him about Black Business Network. And I was just talking to him. And he said, man, where'd you get your entrepreneurial spirit from? I said, you know, we always have certain things. I said, a lot of things just kind of just came, you know, like over the years. I have legal in a 10th house. And you know, and I, I read certain books, you know, Reginald Lewis, Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun? And, you know, I read A Black Titan. And, you, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I just gravitate towards that. That's, that's a, a, a favorite subject matter of mine, which is entrepreneurism. But I'm African-American. So, you know, there's a side of me like, okay, let me, because it's kind of like a tug of war, you know, but the business thing is so important. And then, you know, to create that new business model, you know, because you hear all about all the complaints of us and things like that, you know, and it's like, and I'm working on the ebook too, the business model. And to, you know, to really to help people, because I'm going to tell you, man, it's, it's not easy, you know, it's not, you know, but the last go around, man, it's like, man, I perfected some stuff, you know, it took four years. My last business I mean, my people were good people, and they didn't know certain things, but they learned. And it, it, like I said, it took four years, but around 2008, 2009, everything was mastered. Everything was mastered, customer service, the shipping, and, you know. And I, I think about the past now, because it's like, you know, you're doing the same thing over again. It's like, you know... Those fellas took three and a half, four years. That's, that's a lot of time, you know? And it's like, I don't know if I can do that again. It got to be done two, at least two years. Because I'm thinking it could be done in six months, what have you. But mm -mm. everybody ain't going to read the corporate books and the customer service books. They're just not going to do it. 
It's a thing that Earl Nightingale talked about. Most people not going to do beyond their daily duties or what they're paid to do. They're just not. And so they just go boop, stay right in that area there. I was telling my wife this morning, I said, you know, ever since I've been in, in work, in the workforce, always did more than I was supposed to do or than what I was paid to do. And I had no problems with it. You know, in my last corporate job, I would clean the kitchen. I would clean the kitchen. And I clean Cinderella style. I get on my hands and knees and I clean. I'm like, wax on, wax off. Mr. Miyagi style, you know. Because it's good for the joints. That's how my grandmother used to clean. How she used to clean her house, her kitchen. I go to work early. For sometimes if I don't have work to do, I finish my work early. I would go in the kitchen right before lunchtime, about an hour or two before lunchtime. I would wash all the dishes. And I didn't use this stuff because these are meat eaters. But my mother raised me a certain way, man. I mean, my mother, we used to get slapped like pow, pow. You know, my mother was Bonnie Cooper. She was an airy. She was fire. Pow. Boy, photos close up the right way, you know, because she knew we knew better. She, it's like the, 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 the sloth. and the, You know how these little children, they just don't know how to do nothing. They lazy, can't fold no clothes. I mean, man, I had girlfriends. You know, I used to be in relationships. I was in this, one of my premier relationships. And one day I came in the room and my girlfriend was on the bed crying. And I said, what's wrong? And she looked up and she said, you don't need me. I said, why do you say that? She says, because you can cook, you clean, you wash, you iron, you put creases in the, you just. And I just thought about Bonnie Cooper. My mother did a hell of a job with her children, especially her boys. <laughs> I, even through certain points or elements of dysfunction, I learned so much. Even my mother would dog my father out. She'd get mad she wouldn't cook for him. You ain't eating tonight. I'd be like, that's messed up. He worked hard all day. But, you know, women are emotional and they imbalanced. I ain't cooking. F you and boom, boom, boom. And so my mother, right after that, she'd get all the boys, shave myself and Mike, get in, in the kitchen. And she started showing us how to cook. And you'd be like, well, God, what? You ain't cooking for daddy, but you showing us. She said, because I want to make sure my boys know how to cook. And I don't want the woman putting y'all through what I just put your father through. You're like, what? <laughs> it was cool. But that was her way of teaching us. And my mother, as a woman, she was like, see, because women know women, you see. And one thing I say about my mother, my mother was really real. She was Aries. She was she was fire, the most fiery woman I ever knew. And I know my pops was like that, too. And I know I get it from both of them, but especially my mother. Very passionate, very fiery. Oh, my. Don't get her mad either. Oh, my goodness. I don't know who's worse between myself, my mother, and my father. Good people, big hearts. Great. But don't piss us off. Like Gump was saying, T, you don't get mad T, because you crush people. I mean, Mars and Gemini, we use words to destroy. It's missile attacks. And, it, and it's so real. And, and you know, and I've sought out my angels and a whole bunch of elements to, to help me because I destroy. I, I, I destroy human beings. I should say I once destroyed human beings because, you know, since 2005 in, in my spiritual renaissance, I've been straight. I used to write letters. I used to break people with real stuff. You can let me know the real deal about yourself and then turn on me because I will let you know about yourself. I would destroy you. And I was numb. I have no feeling whatsoever. And my goal is to fucking destroy you. And then I think about my ugly Taurus train. I'm a Scorpio ascendant and, and then the, the tail and then Mars and Gemini. I'm like, I got some hell of an attributes, man. So and that's why I could just really stay to myself and just do me because, you know, because, I, you know, on the surface, man, I'm this nice guy. I don't mess with nobody. I'm cool. I share. You know, if you need help, I'm there. I share the knowledge. But then you got people thinking that you like everybody else, and they try to test you. And I'm like, you can't do it. I grew up in South Central, man. I wasn't a member of Main Street Mafia Crip, but I was in it, man. I saw. I learned. I got G in my blood. 
You cannot try to punk me, dude. I'm I'm worse than your Charles Mansons. I'm worse than all these people out here because I'm intelligent and I'm conscious. I don't have to smoke dope and be out my mind and do some shit to fuck you up. I will sit back here and intelligently, in Michael Corleone fashion, devise some shit to fuck you up. And I ain't talking about nigga shit. I'm talking about institutional type shit. If I go there, you'll be fucked up. I'll use the system. I will fuck you up. I will make your life fucking miserable because the Scorpio side comes out and I want to kill your ass for fucking with me because I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm dealing with your stupid ass. You don't have enough sense to know not to fuck with me. And so when you go there, my motherfucking goal is to destroy your motherfucking ass. To... I'm numb, man. I'm worse than the devil. I'm worse than Michael Myers. So I, I, just leave me alone. You're going to catch you one day. Motherfucker, you can't talk to me like that because I lose everything, homeboy. And I am just obsessed with destroying your ass. Because first of all, in my mind, you shouldn't be on this motherfucker anyway because you taking up oxygen and you taking up space. So my mind, I start thinking of all type of little stuff, man. And, 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 you, and so it's like, dude, just go. Just leave me alone. Just please, just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. And I'm so thankful that I got the angels in my life because they work everything out because... If I had to do me, it would it would just be horrible because I despise stupidity and I hate niggas. I hate niggas. So this side you see here is in it, it, it's pertaining to niggas. And it ain't just black people, but I, I don't like white niggas. I don't like Hispanic. I do not like niggas. Nigga is a mentality. And I just want to destroy you. And that's a part of me. That's a part of so when you get into astrology. You're going to find out that there are skillful traits and unskillful traits. It's real. And we all got it. See, I have a book. It's over there. And it deals with the metaphysics of horror movies. One of the best books I ever came across. And the book is just so deep and it just deals with our infatuation with horror movies. We like to watch Scream and Scream 2 and Halloween, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Because see, we're projecting darkness within ourselves on the big screen so it's safe to sit back and watch michael myers and and and, and jason uh Burries or whatever his name is it is safe <laughs> y'all are afraid and shit like that but that darkness is in you and it comes out of certain people it came out of manson it came out of Bianchi, the, the uh, hillside strangler it, it, it comes out of uh, uh arthur lee allen the zodiac killer that's who the Zodiac Killer was, was Arthur Lee Allen. A goddamn cartoonist had to solve the Zodiac murders because the authorities, the California authorities and the FBI, they knew that Arthur Lee Allen had military ties. They knew damn well it was him. Surf the dude's trailer and his, he, he owned a pair of wing walkers, size 10 and a half. Two people are stabbed. One guy is, uh, uh, one person, the female is murdered. And the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the shoe prints at Lake Berryessa in Napa County, uh, uh, Napa County um, in California, Northern Cal. And I think it's called Napa Valley, but it's in Napa County. The shoe print uh, of, the, of the perpetrator was 10 and a half. And it was wing walkers. And they search this dude trailer and they find goddamn 10 and a half wing walkers. His name was the goddamn Zodiac. He owned a goddamn Zodiac watch. I ain't talking about it was all the evidence was circumstantial. Circumstantial, my ass, Arthur Lee Allen was the goddamn Zodiac killer. Military ties, writing in coal. He stole the coal books out of military libraries. It was military, man. And they didn't want to catch the dude because it would have linked right back to government. I mean, dude got pulled over by a California Highway Patrol, and he had two knives with blood on it. And you talking about, oh, I just killed some chickens that I ate for dinner. And you in Napa, you leaving the scene of a murder, and you got two people stabbed. Come on, gee. I mean, I'm from South Central Los Angeles. I could put it together. But Robert Graysmith, a goddamn cartoon, he had to quit being a cartoonist in order to solve the Zodiac murder. And he did. And they waited 27 years to prosecute the dude and. Uh, or at least began to think about prosecuting, but he dies of a fatal heart attack. 
It was crazy, man. And the dude stayed in Vallejo, which is where my mother, mother-in-law resides. So the last time I went out there, I put in the GPS 32 Fresno Street because that's where Arthur Lee Allen lived. Because I'm the type of cat, I'm, as a researcher, I believe in going to places. You know, so I go there because I pick up on the energy. And I'm like, wow. That which shook the nation back in the late 60s and 70s, he lived right there. Arthur Lee Allen. Right there. It was crazy, man. How this evidence was ignored. It was just, but you know, they do these, these things uh, on purpose. And that's another video. You know, this is this is a random thing. It started off what it was gonna be a title, but I go with the flow, and so now it's gonna be random talk, uh, June verse. So <laughs> there's just so much, man. It's it's so much, so much, so much, so much. You know, but it's cool when you can express yourself and cause people uh, to think, to stimulate thought. You know, you probably can drop some information, some knowledge. I mean, I think that's real, real cool to do. And like I said in another video, for you people out there complaining that nobody's watching your channels, your YouTube channel, first of all, just keep doing what you're doing. Forget about getting hits and just, just keep doing what you're doing. But work on yourself, man. You know, you you, you got to work on your charm. You know, you got to work on eloquence, you know, delivery, articulate. You just, you, you use it to work on yourself. It's YouTube, okay? It, it's not like people are paying a subscription and you got to be perfect and things like that. But use it, man. You know, start a channel and, and just drop. You know, we get, um, at dhealthstore.com, we get a lot of emails with people saying, this is my favorite YouTube channel. This is great. This is... I mean, people really love uh, this channel. It's like the Holly Real channel. You know, it's, it's real talk. It's, it's information, you know. Um, it's not scripted, you know. And I'm just talking. And, you know, I got a bunch of stuff in my damn head. I, I got so much in my head. You know, I used to have headaches because I wasn't getting stuff out. You know what I'm saying? And I was setting myself up to be like these homeless people. We'd walking down the street talking to themselves. Oh, shit, what? I told you. I said, oh, snap. These cats had knowledge and they didn't share it. So you see these cats, man, they be acting like they professionals on the boulevard, man. Broke all dirty and stuff like that. What? I told you. Five plus five equals 19. I told you. I said, okay, I got it. Now, they're not going to allow me to teach in the institution. You can forget that shit. And that's cool. Cause I like doing my own thing. So thank you, YouTube. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Thank you, D Health Store, for letting me speak in Atlanta and New York and places like, you know, give me my own venue so I can get this information out. And you got a lot of information in your head, man. There's energy. You know, you got to be writing like, you got to be making videos type or something like that. Because if not, that energy go down to them lower chakras and you just fucking throughout the day. You know, jackrabbit style. Because you don't know how to use that energy. You know, you got to channel that energy, man. So I bring that energy up and I'm like, I'm typing. I'm creating these articles. You got to, man. You, you got to use, that's creative energy. You're either going to be creating some articles, videos, something of that nature, or you're going to be creating some, some children if you're not careful. Because that's energy. And energy has to be directed. You know, man, a little cat, he was a little Dr. York dude. And he was just like, man, you know, just like, you know, I got with this female. And it's like, and man, I, we were just having sex all day. And I used to study to who I used to do this and that. And I'm like, bro. If you ain't getting this shit out, this, this creativity out, creativity is, you got lower creativity, high creativity. If you ain't doing the high, you can be doing the lower. You can be creating on a low level. He got two daughters now. And he'll tell you, man, he went, tight little brother, he went from knowledge, writing books and stuff like that, nice little honey, little tender, and he kind of got away from his studies, and so all, they were just fucking all day and just living a life. And, you know, next thing you know, he's drinking a little, smoking a weed a little because it was a female. And it was his fault. It was his fault because that's what happened. You know, you know, you get these nice little honeys and they sexy and stuff like that, you know, and they don't really have much discipline. And, you know, and they just want to do their thing. You know, they like you because you got not you, you're different. Opposites attract, you know, but they like to drink. You know, this female, she 
drink her wine, smoke her weed, you know, and she liked to dance and stuff, man. And I'm like, damn, like, okay, this. But when it becomes, like, that's her, that was her lifestyle. So moving in with her, you know what I'm saying, that's where he went, you know. And then when he tried to do it, they were arguing everything, you know. They were just, because, you know, the little brother tried to meditate and get back in his stuff. You know, brother Tahuti, man, she would come in a room messing with me and stuff. And I'm like, she got to have drama, uh, beloved, you know. And it's like, you should have known that, you know. And what you're doing intimidates her. You in there meditating, you reading a book, you know, you doing you. And that ain't her world because, you know, you start studying the consciousness, you know, and, you know, old girl, she drinking, she smoking, she living the world and she tight panties, you know, wearing her panties in tight underwear and, 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 and high heel shoes and she liked to dance and she's smoking her weed and come here baby and you know she gonna sex you up and all that it's like yo gee like like what do you expect dude that she not that's that's two different worlds you know you're different but at the same time you're intimidating you see and you got to work on yourself because what is it about you that gave into that because i mean man we like sex but how much do we like it? Because there is no woman on the planet, no sex, no nothing that would ever make me give up all of this. Screw you, because with this, I can get anything in the mundane. So you got to choose wisely. My wife don't mess with me in all this stuff right here. This is, she know, this is me. This is, this is what I do. This is how I take care of you and the children. This is the knowledge here. It doesn't make me perfect, but I know some stuff. We don't hustle. We work. You know, we help people. We got knowledge. We got a legal problem. We take care. We don't hire no attorney. We take care of that. You know what I'm saying? Our children very healthy, but if something was to go wrong with our children health wise, we take care of that because we got the knowledge. The knowledge is what allows us to live the life that we live. And this is not to say my wife don't know how to have a good time and sexy and stuff. Everybody do. They got it in their own way. But it don't get in the way of this. It's not supposed to, you see. But, you know, cat 24, 25, you know, in the mundane sense, we would call him a young buck, what have you. And, it, you know, I mean, it happens, you know. Female was older than him and stuff. You know, they, you know, they pretty experienced. And, you know, there's some women out there can do some stuff that'll mess you up. You know, they hell of a skillful mouth, hands, vagina. They did some stuff. And I don't care how, you know, strong you think you are and disciplined and stuff like that. They will pull you. Now, I got it going on with a few cats right now who's supposed to be bloop. And the female is doing her thing. She's gyrating that coochie. Boy, she, she my boys, man, y'all ain't the same, man. Like, wow. You know, don't get me wrong, I understand, but ain't nothing or nobody knocking me off my square. Nobody. No, and I'm gonna get my sex, I'm gonna have my good time, I'm gonna eat my, I'm gonna do all of that. Never at the expense of all of this, because this is my world. This is my world. My candle. I love the smell of these candles. I bought these candles really just to smell them. <laughs> I got some that I burn, but I got some I just like to smell. And I like to wand things into existence. You wand. It's like in Fantasia. But my crystals, this is my life, man. In the mundane sense of the matrix. This stuff here. I ain't giving this stuff up for nobody. This is black stone. This is black tourmaline. Come on, sap sucker. You want to send some little negative energy my way, a curse, a psychic attack? No, baby. The black tourmaline vibration is into me. You send it, bloop, hit that force field, turns it around, and send it right back to your monkey behind. And you deserve it. This is my world. I got my little Doreen Virtue, little angel calendar here, daily reminder. I got all my little spiritual books next to me the law of attraction and beyond the secret good stuff I man this is my life you know got my nice sage bundle love it man i got all my books 
Now I have to unplug my little uh, phone. It's a, it's a little bell. I have to unplug it, but when the phone rings, go ding. It's nice. It's a little Zen uh, answering. Uh, well, it's not an answer machine. It's just a, a chime. It takes the place of the, the phone ringing. So this is all my little stuff around here. I got pictures, statues of Buddha up there and just stuff all around in the room is videos. I got books all against the wall. And this is the place I've always, I got a big amethyst geode, got a whole bunch of stuff, you know? This is, this is me, this is my element. And I don't, and I won't give it up for nobody. Nobody, never, ever. I will never give it up. Ah, beautiful pictures on the wall. You know, this is me. This is my element. I love it. I can write here, type here, create here. This is where abundance comes from. I got my angel. I got like seventy some oracle cards, tarot cards, bunch of stuff. All type of book. The power of the subconscious mind. How to use the laws of mind as you think, mind traps, NLP for lazy learning, neurolinguistic programming. Open your mind to receive by uh, Catherine Ponder. Mind power by William Walker Atkinson, hidden side of thing, your mind, how to use it, home course in mental science, history and power of the mind, maximum brain power. Good stuff. Thinking and Destiny. Oh, that's a deep book. Thinking and Destiny. Unveiling Your Hidden Power. The Conquest of Poverty. Mind, Silent Partner, The High Counselor Within. The Path of Light. Patov, The Gift. Knowledge all around me, man. It's all around me. So, this is, uh, this is me. The world is changing. They're getting people caught up on smartphones and technology. I use technology but I don't use it more than natural stuff. I'm going to pick up a pen, a pencil. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go to uh, Barnes & Noble and get me some new crossword puzzles and some more riddles. Uh, the mental gymnastics, people. Mental gymnastics, man. This world can change, but it ain't going to change me. I'm going to be intelligent. I'm going to conduct my own business. I never went to business school, you know, uh, I created and ran multi-million dollar businesses. Um, God, man, just from self-studies, man. I'm a herbalist, trans-crystal specialist, jurisperitist. I'm everything I ever wanted to be. I have no degrees. I never went to school, no college debt, nothing. I'm doing everything I want to do on my own terms. God. And I was just happy with a little corporate salary, but man, and this, this work here, man, it's, psh. as I was saying earlier in this video, I said, I ain't, I'm not going to go through what my parents went through. I got a wife and six children, man. A wife and six children. And I mean, my parents, man, they had four children. They were struggling in South Central and it's really the power of mind, people, you know. Cause, you know, I'm in a big house here in Glendale and, you know, children, they got the swimming pool. I mean, just stuff I thought I would never have, you know, and I really didn't want that stuff, to be honest with you. I just wanted an apartment with some books. But, you know, I mean, the cars and, you know, you got all the little quote unquote luxuries of life, you know, we're vegans. We eat good every day. And, you know, like I said, I just got back, you know, from Atlanta and, you know, it, it, it's just, you know, it's just, a, just it's just a, it's, it's just different, man, from how I grew up. You know, we never got on an airplane. You know, my, my pops, we never went anywhere. You know, my pops, well, I, I, let me take that back. My pops, would, we would go to amusement park. Amusement parks are like going to different cities. You know how like most people went in the summer, they went to Michigan, I went to New York, Chicago. We never did any of that. We would go to Grandma Seth's house and we would go to William A. Maxwell, my, uh, my maternal grandmother's house in Compton. Um, and then pops would take us, pops and moms would go to Las Vegas every year. And then they would come back and take us to Nasberry Farm, Disneyland, Universal Studios. And we had a damn good time there, too. And I'm grateful for my childhood. I'm totally grateful. It's just that I can look back without judging it and saying that, okay, this was cool. I really enjoyed going to amusement parks. I really enjoyed that, you know, with my brothers and sisters and, 
you know, just the experience. It, it was great. And it was better than nothing. But I do that and we travel, you know, like taking the whole family to Sedona. Or, you know, sometimes we'll travel, but, you know, we'll catch a plane, what have you. And we do it all. You know, I never had maple syrup as a child. You know, it was always cheap Brer Rabbit syrup, you know. And I had to become a grown man to <laughs> consume maple syrup. And, you know, maple syrup costs $20 a keg, you know. And I have some here and at the house. So, you know, we're buying like three at a time. And people like $60 on maple syrup. Yeah, that's the life we live. But there's no sellout, you know. Wow, it's expensive. Well, if you believe it's expensive, it's going to be expensive for us. If not, the universe gives us everything we need. We're doing it. And you can too. I mean, I don't know how many times I have to tell you that you can do it too. I mean, if you really want it. Where your books at, man? Where the courses at, man? It's all come. I'm just one man. I'm just one man. And I got a lot on my shoulders. I got a lot. And I learned a lot, man, this go around. You know, I, I really did. I really learned a lot. You know, <laughs> I had a dream about my man this morning, too, man. He reached out to me uh, in the after plane, my former business partner. And we had a pretty cool conversation. And uh, he came correct. And, you know, in a uh, mundane state, we're cool. You know, we don't talk, what have you. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's all good. You know, no more litigation, no more anything. It's just, it's over with. They doing them and I'm doing me, you know, and. You know, certain moves were made and I countered and and it's all good and everything. And we're straight, man. So, you know, we're just living our lives and and just doing us, you know, and that that represents growth. But that's the power of the astral plane. You know, sometime when you want to reach out and talk to people and you can't do it on the mundane because of certain blocks and stuff like that, you would do it in the astral round. You know, same thing with having sex in the astral round. You know what I'm saying? And I, I've experienced that, you know, uh, you know, I should say throughout the course of my life. Well, there were certain females that I didn't have to have sex with them because we went there on the astral plane. You know, I have a real tight female friend and, you know, it just never went there. She wanted to go there and I was like, it's not going to go there, you know. And I remember I had a dream in the astral realm and I felt her. I felt everything. It was real, you know. I wasn't married. Um, and I was doing my celibate type thing there, you know. But on the astral realm, man, um, I went to her state and whew, man, we got busy, you know. And that's happened a couple of times where it's like you can feel it. It ain't just you having a dream, man. You can feel. I, in my dreams, it's like I can taste, I can see, I can touch. I, my, my dreams be like, bam. But see, that's what will happen. You know, if you want something so bad or someone wants something so bad, they will experience it on the astral realm because it's safe. There are no obligations and commitments on the 3D round, you see. If I was to have, if I was to have had sex with my girl, there was going to be some ramifications. There was going to be some emotional bonding, you know, she could have got pregnant, what have you. And I didn't want those responsibilities, right? I didn't want those obligations. I didn't want the responsibility that come from the sex act. Even if that didn't happen, it would have been like, she would have been into me more. And I didn't want that, you see. So what happens is when people know, like, damn, okay, it ain't going to happen because he's not trying to be married. He's not this and that, what have you, but I want to experience this. It will take place on the astral realm, whatever it wants to be desired. And so you get it. Bam. And, like, I know what it's like to have sex or to be intimate with her because I went there on the astral realm. And it happens to us, females, males, and See, I talk about the stuff most people will not talk about. See, I've never put myself up as some type of saint. Life is real, man. And you're going to experience things. You're going to experience dreams where you're doing some wicked stuff or something wicked is being done unto you. You, you go there in a the dream state for various reasons. <laughs> various reasons, you know. But I got deep into dreams a long time ago. I can decipher my dreams, you know. And people... I've had a lot of issues where I'm friends, but then I become en enemies with people because I have, I have a uh, uh, Uranus and Libra in the 11th house. So that means you're friends one day, enemies the next. It goes back and forth. And that's my life story. And plus I have a stellium in the seventh house and the seventh house is the seventh house of uh, open enemies. Or I should say it's the house of open enemies. That's my life story. So I don't trip on things where I'm cool with somebody and I'm enemies or I'm enemies with someone and then we cool. That's Uranus and Libra in the 11th house. It, it goes like that.
so, but yeah, you know, I was like, wow, man. And uh, I saw my peeps at Stein Agency, man. I mean, life is beautiful. I don't miss out on nothing. I get to travel. You know, there are times I see my parents, uh, moms, pops, you know, and I know it's all real. It's not just this realm, this realm here is real. Even the astral is real, man. Do you miss your mother? I don't have to miss her. I, I still communicate with her. I still see her. She'll hug me and, son, I miss you. Tell your siblings that, you know, I love them. And, and she's there. You know, and it's like, wow, man, and pops and my uncles and everybody's still here. So there's no grieving just because they checked out on this realm and it's, it's over with. No, no, no. <laughs> what a random talk video this has been, huh? All over the place. I mean, I could talk about hundreds of things, man. But, you know, my thing, though, in, in these videos is is. If you could just think, you know, like to who do you talked about the knowledge, man? Like, like the cat didn't go to school. The cat didn't, you know, he, he, he's just, he's totally unorthodox. And he doing him. You know what I'm saying? He's really doing him. He's enjoying it. it you know, it's, it's in here. I could do this every damn day. I don't get paid. I do not get paid for this. Money is not in the equation. When you give up on the money, the money is going to come. It is, I mean, it's. I mean, you guys know my transition, what I went through. You know, I walked away from a lot. And within a year time, bloop, it's back. So it's like, you know what? It's just, wealth is just, it's part of me. Money is just part of me now. I've learned that lesson. I've really learned that lesson. I have learned so much in this past year. Like I was telling my wife, I said, babe, I said, I'm cool. I said, you know what I've learned? Nobody's going to do it like Tahuti. And you know what? I got to shoulder the burden. I'm going to do it all. I'm going to do it the books, the courses. I'm going to do it all. Well, no, you make it easy for... Mm -mm. I've learned. Mm -mm. I got 23 years under my belt. I'm bold. I'm radical. I'm just going to do stuff that most people cannot do, will not do. I can't cut my mother off, my daddy. You know these people are adverse to you. I can't clip. I can't do this. I can't quit my job. I can't do such. A, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Stay your ass over there. Because the mod raw is. I move. I'm a Taurus. I'm a bull. I charge. Got no time. You're harsh. You're this. Yes, I'm all of that in a bag of goddamn chips. Whenever you ever see me complaining about my goddamn life. Hell yeah, I'm harsh and hard and don't use tact and shit. I ain't got no goddamn time. And you know what? Like my man, my, my motto song is The Boss by James Brown. I can afford to be this goddamn way because you know why? Because the goddamn phone keeps ringing for me. The goddamn emails keep coming in for me. So I can afford to talk like this. Your monkey asses can't because ain't nobody asking for none of y'all. And these are people in the, in the midst that I be talking to. None of you motherfuckers, but you want to come on the scene and act like you equal to me. All you motherfuckers. And I do lose it. And, I, and then when I go there, I say none of you motherfuckers, all y'all together, none of you motherfuckers can do what the fuck I do because you don't have what I have in me. You want it, and that's why you're attracted, because opposites attract. But these people are so weak and impotent, the, the, why are they in your circle? Because opposites attract, goddammit. The motherfuckers are weak, and they want to be strong. Only the strong can survive up in this joint. You can't unseat no Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, Bush. These motherfuckers will murder, and then go eat dinner like they did do nothing. That's their life. You can't handle that. You bomb and get sick. Oh, my God, they killed. They blew up a building, killed 4,000 people. That shit don't bother George Bush and the Clintons and Obamas. That's, these motherfuckers, are, they prime for what they do. You're not. You're a little religious motherfucker. You know the Lord Jesus Christ, love, and this and that. And these people here that I just named are fucking you in your ass. No, you don't understand the world. And I made up my mind to understand the world. You don't understand why I watch horror movies. I just told you about the metaphysics of horror movies. You can't handle that shit. You can't handle why Charles Manson did what the fuck he did. You can't handle Arthur Lee Allen. You can't understand that. Because you in the peace and love as if it's only peace and love. Like all the songs say, the, the world is in need of love. Every song is about love, but where is the love? 
That's the number one thing people talk about is love, and you ain't got no motherfucking love. All you got is lust. Because you ain't even conscious enough or even truthful with yourself to say, you know what? I'm confusing love with lust. I don't know what love is. So you can talk love, 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 love song, and it's all lust. Girl, I want to do it to you. I want to spank your booty. I want to stick it in your booty. I, lust, lust, lust. This is a panty dropper. Lust. And you like that shit. So just be real. Say, you know what? I'm in the motherfucking lust. That's why I'm fucked up. That's why my children fucked up. Because I didn't love that motherfucker. We was just fucking. And I got pregnant. So my child came through the lust gate. And I'm going to do a video dropping down the three gates. The love gate, the lust gate, and the rape or illegal gate. It explains why people, certain people are straight in life. Other people are fucked up. They can make it. They cannot make it. And you come to this gate right here, you really fucked up. You know, but it all means something because you chose that shit. But I'm going to actually go there. You know, it's just a lot of stuff. So I have to mix metaphysics and the, the business and all this stuff here, you know, and, and an attempt so people can really get it, man. You know, because people go to school, sit down, listen to a boring ass professor. And you got to read this whole fucking chapter here when the stuff you need is probably in this chapter. You need to be free of all that bullshit and just cut straight to the goddamn chase and get what you need. You, you, I mean, six months in school for what? You can't you ain't happy. No way. It, people are not. That's why the, the majority of videos that I'll be doing in the future is doing with life purpose. I'm married. I'm not happy. I'm not getting enough sex. I'm not. It's what shit. It's, your life, you, you got a magic goddamn wand. Your life's supposed to be the life that you want. What type of shit is that? I'm not happy. Well, goddamn it, get unhappy. How do you do that? You don't know how to be happy? People don't. I don't know how to be happy. I don't know how to think. I don't know how to start. Basic shit and people don't know. The Matrix did a damn good job. And it's amazing the money that people spend on these universities. Do you know if the people like a Phil Valentine or a Bobby Hammond or a Sabi or a Jewel Pookram or a Queen of Four and a Jordan Maxwell, do you know if these people was to get the money that you people have spent on these bullshit institutions, do you know where you would be now? It never fails. You know, people spend $25,000, $35,000, $50,000 on a bullshit education, and then they come to the gurus and shit, could barely pay $200 for something. Could barely pay $500 for an online course. I mean, it's crazy. How the hell did you raise $40,000? You can't raise $500 or $1,000 or $15,000 or $2,000 and pay this man and pay this woman for their online course. And then you want it for free. It's crazy, man. I mean, how come people like Dr. B, man, and you feel Valentine, man, how come, my man, y'all should have school to be teaching, man? Well, somebody got to finance it, man. We got to do everything. Man, these people are doing the best that they can do. Ashwa Quazy. Quazy been on the scene for a minute. Ain't nobody buying Quazy complimentary Mercedes Benz and paying his rent stuff like that. And you wonder why his trips to Egypt cost so much and his videos cost so much. That's how he sustains himself. If he had to depend on the people, he would starve. He would be doing more if he had more support. Brother Kitty just sent an a, 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 a email. Brother Kitty from LIB Radio. He's shutting down. He recognized Facebook is where the people go. 8,000 members and he only had 10 active members. 8,000 subscribers, and he only had 10 active members. He sent an email, I think it was yesterday, the last month of LIB program. Now, I don't know, because Kitty has said some stuff in the past. Sometimes I'll be wondering about Kitty, you know. But this email, it really seems legit that he's going to start doing some things using Facebook. Now, he knows it's a tool of surveillance. There's some government stuff to monitor. But he recognizes that's where his people are at. He's trying to do the collective thing, the community thing, but, you know, the people are just not with it. The people are like sheep. You know, I commend Kitty for what he was trying to do or what he actually did, but his objective, and he just fell short. He wasn't getting the financial uh, support on a monthly basis. I mean, 8,000 people is enough people to support you, you know, 
But, you know, there are some things that Kitty could have impl uh, uh, um, implemented. And, I mean, he, he was selling the tapes and stuff like that. My philosophy is get in business and sell something that the people need. Or you can even say what they want. I believe in selling people what they need. Get in business and make your chips through business. Educate on the side. That's what I do. It's a, it's a model. I know a lot of blacks may be adverse to it because the, the, the education is needed. And that's why you see the D Health Store YouTube channel growing exponentially like that. Because that's the knowledge and people want the knowledge. They're hungry for the knowledge. They ain't got time for the bullshit, man. You know, and then some of the stuff, you know, I, I talked to a cat. This was a year or two ago. And he was like, he missed some names. He said, you know, these people are mad at you. And these are some well-known cats out there. He said, they're mad at you because you give up what they teach in their courses for free. And I said, that ain't my goddamn fault. I can do it because I, my snaps is being made over here. I'm making a video. The snaps are coming in. I set it up like that. You can't get mad at me because I'm smart enough to do that. Yeah, man, they mad at you, man, because, you know, they say you're giving information away for free. And but see, that's how they make their lives. And I understand that. But I'm my own man. You, you can't fault me for, for doing what I'm doing. I'm a man. I stand on my own, too. So... If, if I create a business and say, you know what, my chip's going to come through the business, the various businesses, and I'm going to take my time as charity, I see it as charity, and I'm going to educate the people free of charge. That's my world. And if it's messing with your world, you need to check your world. Don't check me. Check your world. Because I'm doing me. I didn't go to nobody and say, hey, man, can I do such and such? I'm my, I'm my own man. I wake up and say, you know what, Bloop, I got a plan. I got an idea. I'm going to execute it. That's what a man is supposed to do. So... You know, if you see me as infringing on your stuff, then you need to you need to go in here because I'm not tripping. You know, I'm I'm doing good. I'm straight. It's 2012. It's June 2012. I'm straight. You know, I went through a transition. You know what I'm saying? I walked away from a, a life as I knew it. I walked away from some serious Skrilla and walked right back to it because it's the same plan. You know what I'm saying? Now, I would like to see customer service, shipping, and all that stuff. I want to see that mass in two years. I don't know if I can go another four years like the first go-around. Because I'm dealing with people who don't think like me, who don't study like me, and they're into their various fields, but they got good hearts and they want to be a part of it. And that's like the people at the health store. They, they're good people, but they don't go hard. They don't study. They don't, they don't do the things that's required to speed things up. It's, it's linear. You know, and I give them credit. They're doing, you know, they're doing them, but... You know, to, to, to be on my level, to move, I move. You know, you, you, you got to catch the fuck up. I can't be slowing down. You got all the stuff in your head. You got to slow down. Then, ooh, that's like stabbing you in your goddamn head. Catch up. Motherfucker, catch up. Catch up, goddammit. Because shit, time is of the essence. You know, you, you I mean, it ain't right, man. You, I mean, man, look, you fast, you detox, you meditate, you chakra balance, you do your, your spiritual soul. I have done some stuff over the years, man. So I'm here. You can't expect me to just root and just, okay, okay, hurry up. Okay. I, I No, you guys got to hurry up. And then people want to get mad and everything. And then you, you can't challenge me. You can't be where you are and challenge me because I'm going to throw some physical stuff up in your face. Because if you was all that, all my level, then you would have done what I've done. You can't create the business I have done. You can't write the articles I've done. You can't do any of that. You don't have it under your belt. You can't do it in the present state. Not that you're not capable of it, but you can't do it. You haven't done the work, but you want to be on my level. You can't ball against me. You can't ball with me or against me. You haven't done the work. You have no discipline. You can't even give up me for 30 days. You can't even give up sex for one year, two year, three year, four year. Why? Why I got to give it up? Discipline. You don't even have it in you to do that. To even try the metaphysics. Look, I had me thinking I had to work two and three jobs and hustle and stuff like that. And then I find out I got these money angels. And they work just like that. This universe work just like that. No, I yeah, no. I got the same responsibilities you guys got. I got the wife, I got the children, I got the house, I got the cable, I got the car, I got I gotta purchase gas, I go to Whole Foods Market for, uh, for food, I gotta travel, I gotta go to an amusement park, I gotta pay child support, I got the same goddamn responsibility as all of you guys, and I don't work no goddamn corporate uh, gig, I do me, and I make my snapper rules, and I make way more than I ever made in the world, and you can too, if you would only believe 
in your goddamn self. And I'm going to end on that note. Peace and love.